has to make a stand. What has transpired is a full-scale attack on the body of Christ and on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church was never supposed to meet again. But I know that there's going to be another great spiritual awakening in America. And there's not a devil in hell that can stop it. You cannot stop the wave of the Holy Ghost. You cannot stop the church. And they shall rise up. They shall rise up. A prophet sign that will rise up. We'll be standing for the word of God tonight. We stand for signs and wonders and miracles. We stand for Pentecost. Every tribe and tongue together as one. This is the end of the church.
We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. Give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Who's come expecting to receive, ready to receive everything God has for you? Well, welcome to the stand, night number 1,396. It's going to be a powerful night and a powerful week. Why don't you turn and greet somebody? Tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. You can be seated just for a moment. We're going to have a couple quick announcements and then dive right back into praise and worship. Welcome to everyone watching by way of the broadcast, by satellite, by YouTube, the different online broadcasts, Revival TV, Revival.com, Facebook, all the different streams. We welcome you. Man, it's going to be a powerful week. Um, this week, we're heading into the 1400s now. Uh, we're at t- night number 1396 tonight, but um, a powerful week this week. This week, we've got, uh, and tonight included, we've got uh, Pastor Caleb Ring with us all the way from the River Claremont and Evangelist. Ankit Rambabu, Evangelist Ankit Rambabu as well, coming in and tag teaming to minister to this this whole week. So it's going to be a powerful time. If you're if you're anywhere in the region, you should come. You should put your take your house slippers off, put your dancing shoes on, and come on down and join us in the presence of God tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, 
but welcome to everyone watching, and we want to uh, welcome you and, and invite you to watch along all this week. We also have prayer operators standing by to take your call if you need prayer. Um, uh, we're going to pray for you at the end of the night for all the prayer requests. But if you need call, we got. Uh, if you need prayer, we have people standing by to pray for you now. So if you call with your prayer request, there'll be someone who's anointed ready to pray for you, and then we're going to believe for miracles right at the end of the service together answered prayer and supernatural uh, God's intervention in your life. Those of you on Instagram, you can follow Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. As you know, the team, we're going to talk a little more about this tonight, but as you know, the team is in Africa for the Africa tour, the nine city, seven country tour that's just started. They left earlier this week. On Wednesday, they flew out and landed in Botswana. We'll talk more about that, but you can follow along the pictures and what's happening there by, uh, by finding Pastor Rodney uh, on Instagram. Please don't take any photos and uh, no recording. And then uh, we have River University scholarships available at riveruniversity.org. Amen. Also, the River School of the Bible, revival.com forward slash RSB. And to remind you that Kingdom Business Fellowship meets on the first and third Tuesday of each month, plus it's live on Zoom. And then this is an important announcement here, uh, is we have a 24-hour prayer chain. There was an email that was sent out on Wednesday and it says prayer, your prayers are needed. But we're asking people to sign up to take an hour slot to pray every week. So you could pick, I want to pray Tuesday morning at 5 o'clock. And you take that time. And so we can get people praying around the clock for the team in Africa for everything that's happening. So you can check that email or you can go to revival.com forward slash prayer chain. And you can sign up for that to pray for Pastor Rodney and Pastor Donica and the team through the Africa tour. Healing School is in the middle of its session right now. The next one starts this coming Monday, a week from today, April 15th through the 26th. Register for the two weeks, and, uh, and that's on revival.com. The session is now run uh, in succession. And then we have, in a week from today also, the, the day that Healing School starts, we have 12 hours of prayer here at the, uh, on campus here, and that's going to go from noon to midnight. So a week from today, if you were here in a week from now, we would be uh, about seven, an seven hours into our 12 hours of prayer. So come and join us for that, and then tune in. And then our, the River Car Show's on uh, May 11th at 2.45 p.m. I know a lot of people come and visit us for that. And then Summer School of Evangelism, which is starting June 3rd through July 6th. It's a powerful time. If you... Uh, want to get trained up to win the lost, if you say, I need more boldness, I need to learn, uh, if maybe if you're an outreach pastor of a church and you want to sharpen your, your, your tool, toolkit a little more, they teach not just one-on-one -on -one evangelism, but also how to run an outreach, in-reaches, outreaches, the different things, and really gain a fire and a passion for souls. And if you're not a soul winner, you should come and get set ablaze and become... So this is for everybody. We've had professional athletes, NFL players, come and join us for... for Summer School of Evangelism. So come be a part of what God's doing. That runs June 3rd through July 6th. And that you can go to revival.com forward slash SSE, Summer School of Evangelism. And then we're going to end these announcements to get back into worship. And we're going to do that by playing this video for the Ministers and Leaders Conference coming up in the spring. And that's next month, May the 19th through May the 26th. And that's Sunday through Sunday. We want to invite you to come and be a part of that. It's going to be a powerful time. The theme is the shout. So the video is going to... Uh, I want you to crank your TV volume all the way up because the video is very quiet and enjoy the video with us. Let's go ahead and roll that and then we'll get back into a time of worship. We'll see you soon.
we are about to see in the next three years will eclipse everything that we've ever seen. Everything in the kingdom of God is about to be escalated and the power of God is going to flow forth from the church. It shall be shouted from the mountaintops until the whole of America knows that Jesus is alive, that he is real, that he is coming soon. The shout, the shout that will be heard around the world, the shout that will come in your nation. Get ready! I'm telling you right now, you get ready!
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you
Hallelujah. Lift your hands all over this place. Just begin to bless him out of your mouth tonight. Are you thankful for the presence of God tonight? Are you thankful for the purposes of God in your life tonight? Go ahead and bless him and thank him. Oh, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. Lord, we bless you. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. We thank you, Lord, that we can come and gather on this, one, this Monday night night number 1,396 of the stand. Thank you, Lord, that every ear is anointed to hear and every heart anointed to receive. Oh, we give you all the glory. Thank you how you sustained us. Lord, we pray for even Pastor Rodney and Pastor Adonica and the team there in Africa. We thank you that you be about them as a wall of fire. Oh, you go before them and make the crooked places straight. Thank you for a new grace to, to rest on that team. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that Africa will be touched and changed by the power and the glory of God. And that even tonight we'll be touched and changed by the power and the glory of God in the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, and everybody said, ah, who came ready to receive tonight? Hallelujah. We'll give the Lord one more shout of victory tonight. Hallelujah. Welcome. We want to welcome you, those of you in the house, those of you watching to the stand night number 1,396. If you're in the building one more time, just turn and greet somebody. Tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. You can be seated in the presence of God tonight. Those of you watching, welcome. Those of you watching by way of television, the satellite all over the world, great to have you here for this Monday night. It's going to be a powerful week. Uh, many of you we made the announcement earlier, but this week we've got a, a special lineup. We've got a tag team happening here with, um, uh, with Pastor Caleb Ring from the River Church at Claremont, who's here to bless us. going to be a powerful time in the presence of God. And then Evangelist Ankit Rambabu, who's no stranger here to the ministry, powerful uh, uh, miracle and evangelism ministry. So we're, we're, we're blessed, uh, blown away here. This is going to be this whole week. If you're, if you're in the area, if you're within an hour, two hours, Come and make plans to be with us. Even if, you know, these services go long enough that if you got in the car now, you could make it uh, even before it starts getting, uh, even before it gets to the best part. Amen. So come and be a part of what God's doing. We got people calling in and there is a call, there is a number on the screen here. You can call. We have prayer operators standing by and call and we'll link our faith with you. If you're sick, if you're in need of a touch of God, if you're in, in need of uh, God's hand of mercy in your life, whatever it is, whatever the prayer request is, financial or for God's intervention, call us. We've got calls coming in from, uh, there's Toronto, Canada calling in, Las Vegas, Nevada, Naples, Florida, uh, Missouri, Mississippi, Louisiana, and even Tampa, Florida calling about their teeth, need intervention for their teeth. So um, give us a call. we got people to pray with you, and then we're going to link our faith at the end uh, to see miracles. But it's going to be a powerful night tonight. Before, we, before I pass the microphone off uh, to, for the, 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 uh, the first part of the meeting, the, the word for your giving and your receiving, we want to do a quick recap just so you can know what's going on in Africa. The team left, most people know this, but the team left this Wednesday for this trip, this big month-long trip in Africa. It's a, a seven-nation, nine-city trip that lasts about a month. And they left on Wednesday, and they flew out, and they were in transit for over 20 hours, and then they landed first stop in Gaborone, Botswana. So I'm going to ask the TV department to go ahead and put these pictures up. We're going to kind of scroll through it. They're going to just go with me as I kind of narrate what the week's been like so far. This is their arrival. And you can see all of this on Dr. Rodney Howard Brown's Instagram. So we're just going to show you some of the highlights. But if you want to see the video footage of what's happening, they were welcomed. Uh, there they landed in um, uh, Botswana and Gaborone, and then they checked into the hotel. And Pastor Rodney gave a rundown for what's happening over the, the course of the next eight days. And so that was on, th on Thursday. And then Friday morning, so this was the recap, this would have been Thursday night. Uh, Friday morning, Pastor Rodney had a meeting and the team had a meeting with 
uh, the Honorable Cabo Morweng, who is a, a member of Parliament, Minister for the State President, Office of the President. And it was a powerful meeting. It says here, uh, everything, Pastor said, everything I wanted to accomplish last visit, we were able to, by the grace of God, accomplish this visit. We know they're reaching into three realms, into government, into business, into the church realm. And then from there, that was at 9.30 in the morning on Thursday, and then uh, sorry, Friday, and then this afternoon, 1 p.m. luncheon for the leading bishops and denominational leaders. That's what you see there. It says they're so precious, they ask questions. I was able to answer them and give them advice concerning their role in the, la- in the nation. So meeting with the leaders. And then another meeting with, uh, uh, with the honorable member of parliament, the head of environmental and tourism for Botswana. Amazing time as we discuss the complexities and problems facing the nation, and strategies and solutions to see a turnaround over the next 36 months. And then that led to the Friday night meeting, meeting number one in Gaborone, Botswana, and uh, we'll see here coming up in the slides, there's meeting number one, and powerful night. Pastor said, what a great opening night here in Gaborone, Botswana. People came hungry and thirsty for the Word of God. They wanted to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Many were ignited and set ablaze. The altar filled, and many were mobilized to win souls. The numbers for that night, that was Friday night, meeting, it's city number 257 of the 300 cities. Total attendance was 1,588, altar, 374 people at the altar, and then total mobilized, 1,335 people mobilized to win souls, trained and equipped. Let's thank the Lord for that. That's so powerful. And then into Saturday morning, I mean, they're they're, uh, landed and running into Saturday morning. This morning meeting, we spoke to business leaders about kingdom business. We talked about the problems and the challenges facing the nation of Botswana. From the business aspect, finding solutions and asking questions, thinking outside the box. Many received a touch from heaven as joy hit the place. So that business meeting uh, was 761 business leaders in attendance. Uh, an altar call was given, 39 people received salvation or rededicated their life, and then 504 were mobilized to win souls, the running totals. And then from there, they, they left and they went to Maun, which it says in Gamiland in Botswana, but it was uh, on, the, on, the, the, um, on the list it was for Maun, and the attendance was 337 under the tent, 116 in the altar and 269. Did we put those pictures up? Did you see the tent? We did see the tent. There's the tent. All right. So the Botswana totals, 2,000. This brings us up to date here. 2,686 people in attendance, 529 people in the altar, and 2,108 total mobilized to win souls. That's committing to win a soul a day in Africa. Pastor said here, Botswana, that's a wrap. What a great night. The fire fell. Many were touched and mobilized by the power of God to win souls. This will spread into the villages of the Okavanga, Okavanga Delta. Now the team has a few days there in the Delta together, and then the next stop is in Madagascar, and that's going to be coming up on the 12th and the 13th, and there was an email that was sent out about that, excuse me, uh, 13th and 14th, that's in Madagascar, and um, there's an email that's sent out. So we want to remind you, and for those that missed the announcement earlier, we sent out an email for anyone who's on our email list And it was on uh, Wednesday asking for your prayers and giving uh, uh, the itinerary for what's coming up. But um, for those that didn't get it, we have a prayer chain that we've launched for this trip specifically where we can get people praying around the clock. And so what we're asking is people to sign up. So if you go to revival.com forward slash prayer chain, and then it lets you pick your day of the week and your time. And if you can just give one hour where you're praying specifically for the team One hour a week where you're praying for the team and you say, I want to pray at 7 p.m. You pick your time, you pick your day, and you sign up so we can get people praying around the clock. Who knows how to pray? Who prays in the Holy Ghost? Who knows they should pray? Who has a mouth and a tongue? All right. Then you qualify. Amen. Who's born again? You have Jesus in your heart. Good. You're the people we're looking for. Those of you watching, sign up there to pray for the team and uh, we look forward to giving you more updates as, the, as the, the days go on. But isn't it so awesome to be a part of a ministry that's impacting and shaking nations? And, uh, man, it takes me right back. It seems like, yeah, let's thank the Lord for that together. <laughs> seems like just yesterday they were on that last trip, and then we were welcoming them, welcoming them home. So it's going to be powerful. The time's going to fly by. But won't you help me welcome, no stranger to the, to, to the house here, a great man of God and a privilege to have him as he comes, Evangelist Ankit Rambabus, to, to uh, deliver the message to you tonight on your sowing and, and seed time and harvest time. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Just lift your hands up to the Lord across this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I worship you. Get the worship team up here quickly for a moment. We worship you, Jesus. Go, just lift your voices for a moment. Just pray with everything that you have. Just speak in tongues. Ira mando ramando rom rom robo boson deri baramo sokor mande re basata mahandi ira ramando ira ramande ra bason do ro breve seke ira mando ra basate le boro mo kom breve te I worship you Lord Jesus I worship you Father I worship you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for your sweet presence. Tonight may every man be brought low and let Jesus Christ be lifted up. The name above all names, the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have free reign. Come do whatever you want to do tonight. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. We yield to you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, I will give you rest. I'll say that again. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, I will give you rest. Mm -mm. I don't think you heard me. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, I will give you rest. The Lord's going to give you rest. This week, the rest is going to begin. 
and it's going to continue for the rest of the year. You will rest for the rest. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you will give them rest. I thank you that you're a God of rest. Hallelujah. He's going to give you rest from all your enemies. He's going to give you rest from all your financial struggle. He's going to give you rest in every area of your life. By the end of this week, you won't even recognize your life. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you are going to be at rest. And you will realize the Lord is able to accomplish more when you are resting than when you're stressing. There's going to be no more stressing, just resting. And you will rest and you will rest and you will rest. And you will do more during the time of rest than you ever did before while you were stressing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Every hard-heartedness, stubbornness, unbelief, rebellion, unteachableness holds hearts and minds of people. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Every, every high thing exalting itself above the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ, we pull it down. May there be freedom in the atmosphere tonight in Jesus' name. Breakthroughs on every side. Breakthroughs on every side. Breakthroughs on every side in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Please be seated. I'm not going to take too much time tonight. I'm uh, What's the word for it? I'm a cameo. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you excited about tonight? The excitement is palpable. All right. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Are you excited about tonight? <laughs> this week, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I always consider it an honor to be with my family here, the River of Tampa Bay Church. Amen. The greatest church on the face of the earth, according to me. And the greatest pastor on the face of the earth as well, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. If you're watching us around the world, or even in Tampa, Florida, what are you doing on a Monday night? Waiting for the eclipse to happen, and then you expect it to be raptured tonight, but you're still here? Or maybe you got left behind. Maybe we're the ones that got left behind. We don't know. That's a joke. I'm kidding. But you should be here. I'm just saying. It's going to be a great week. It's going to be a great week. Hallelujah. I don't know if you, how many of you saw the eclipse tonight, this afternoon? Like five people. The key is to stare right at it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Shaq. I appreciate you. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I had a scripture in my spirit. I was actually studying this a couple of days ago. And the Lord asked me to share this this week, this week with you. And I'm going to continue on this topic for probably the rest of the week. Um, whichever day is I'm here preaching because I don't know what the plan is, but I'm going to be here every night. But how the tag team is going to work, no clue. I'm going to leave that to Dr. Rodney. Whatever he says goes. Amen. So if you, oh, if you brought your Bibles with you, open it with me very quickly. We're going to read. I don't have the message translation, but I'm going to pull it up on my phone. <laughs> 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. Second Corinthians, chapter 4. This scripture actually made me laugh, believe it or not. Because I saw a preacher who uses scripture 
when I heard it, it began, it made me laugh. Now, I've never laughed at a scripture before, so that was interesting. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we'll read verse 16. Are you ready for this? Can you increase the volume on my sound, please? Increase the bass, that'll help me. All right. So we are not giving up. I like the way that starts. We are not giving up. Okay, let me try that again. So we are not giving up. There's not one person under the sound of my voice that's going to give up. So we are not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside though, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his un- unf- unfolding grace. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. Verse 17. These hard times are but small potatoes compared to the coming good times. I'll say that again. These hard times are but small potatoes compared to the coming good times. The lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the, but the things we can't see now will last forever. Hallelujah. I, today, even as I was coming here, the Lord spoke to me to tell you. you it, might look, it might almost feel like you're being squeezed on every side. But I want you to understand, it doesn't matter what the devil tries to do, God's going to turn around for good. And let me tell you tonight. Whatever you're facing today, even financially or whatever way you're facing something today, let me tell you this. The days of your woes are now over. From today and for the rest of your life, you are going to start living in a financial overflow. And people say, well, you've said this all the time and, you know, during these weeks and, you know, every preacher that comes here says that, but nothing really happens to me. It's because you do nothing about it. Hello. Hello. But I want you to understand, the hard times are just small potatoes. They're just small potatoes. Just look at them as potatoes. Haters going to hate, potatoes going to potate. It doesn't matter. If, you, if life gives you potatoes, boil them. <laughs> But regardless of that, I want you to understand, even though situations might seem like potatoes, here's what's going to happen. God's going to give you his super abundance. And you don't realize you're right around the corner. You're right about to turn the corner. And everything that you've ever dreamed of, God's going to put it into your hands. The devil's power over your life is now over. Today, I came here to declare over your life that you will never again lack ever again in the name of Jesus. The devil tries his best to freak you out. It doesn't matter. Ignore him. Tell him to go stick it where the sun don't shine. And there are certain things the Lord began to speak to me about, and this was December 24th. And I'm going to share something very powerful with you. And the people watching us around the world, this is not some made-up story or whatever. This is what the Lord showed me. And I don't have dreams. Zero dreams. I don't even dream. So when I do end up dreaming, it's a God dream. And so every time the Lord speaks to me, he speaks to me either through, through a dream or through a vision, Sometimes I'll hear the audible voice, but most of the time it's through a dream or a vision. Many times I'll wake up in the middle of the night hearing the voice of the Lord in my dream, and I'll know exactly what to do. And so that's how I operate in my ministry. People think, well, Evangelist Duncan has great strategy. Whatever he's doing is working. The only thing that I'm doing is obeying the voice of the Lord. And people say, well, you talk about obedience all the time. Yeah, because that's the key to my life. 
Obedience is what broke me through. Obedience when I did not understand it. See, you don't always have to understand when God asks you to obey. Okay, hostile crowd on this side. Let me walk over there. You don't always have to understand when God asks you to obey. You just have to do it. And as you do it, it will start to unfurl. And the Lord will show you exactly why he told you to do that which he told you to do. And that's how my whole life has been. Every time I obeyed the voice of the Lord, the Lord gave me another breakthrough. And then another breakthrough. And then another breakthrough. And then another breakthrough on every side. So December 24th, I was, I was laying down my bed and I was praying. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you got to give me a word for, for the year of 2024. And I said, Lord, I, I'm not going to step into the year without you telling me what's going to happen in 2024. And as I was praying, I don't know if I fell asleep. I don't know if I went into a trance. I don't remember anything. All I know is I just woke up at like probably early in the morning, like 6, 7 a.m. in the morning. And I, it was just, that's just how it was. And uh, I remember in this vision that I had. Now, what I'm sharing with you, I do not want you to take it lightly because this is a prophetic word the Lord gave me for the year of 2024. And the Lord told me to share this wherever I go across America. And I've not had the chance to share the river, but today I get, get to share it. Amen. So just pay attention to me today. And I'm not going to take long. In this vision or dream or whatever you want to call it, this is what I saw. I saw the earth in front of me, and the earth was void and without form, and darkness covered the earth. It was almost like God took me back to Genesis chapter 1. And I saw the earth, and there, it was void and without form. And as I saw the earth, I saw two hands that were covering the earth, and the earth looked like a globe. Amen. Amen. Was not flat anyway, just saying. <laughs> but th those are the two of the most beautiful hands I've ever seen in my life. And I saw one hand, the right hand, pull, just do this. And as it pulled like this, I saw the ground, the land come out of the waters. And I saw the same hand just flick its finger like this. And I saw the winds just surround the earth. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Then I saw those same hands pull the earth apart and then showed me what's right in the middle of the earth and then put it back together. And I'm seeing all this and I'm freaking out in my dream because I don't know what's going on. And then the next moment I saw almost like Google Earth, like somebody was pinch, pinching to Zoom I went right into the earth, and I saw myself standing at the edge of something. I don't know if it was a cliff. I don't know if it were a mountain. I don't know if it were a building. I don't know what it was. It was just the edge of something. And all I knew was beneath that edge was the abyss. And there was nothing else there. And I was standing at the edge... And I heard the voice of the Lord very clearly and said to me, jump. See, first of all, I have a fear of heights. I do not like heights. That's why you'll never find me bungee jumping. You will never find me skydiving. If you ever hear that I died in a skydive accident, that was not me. Somebody killed me because obviously I would have never done that. Okay. I love being on the ground. Amen. So I don't like heights. In any way, shape, or fashion. So I'm standing, the Lord says, jump. And I say, no. What do you mean jump? There's nothing there. The Lord spoke to me again and said, jump. I said, absolutely not. If I jump, I'm going to die. The third time, the voice spoke to me again and said, now listen to this, let go. And when I heard the voice say, let go, I slowly, reluctantly let go, and I started to fall backwards that way. And as I fell, I fell into the abyss, and I saw the darkness start to cover me on all sides. And I'm thinking to myself in that dream, I'm like, it's over for me. I'm dead. I'm not going to make it out of this. It's finished. 
And as I'm thinking that, I saw a hand, the same hand that put the earth together. The same hand come right under me like that. And I was laying on the hand, and the hand began to lift me up. Now listen, there was another person also standing on that same edge. And the same voice, voice was speaking to that person as well. Let go, let go, let go. As the voice began to, this hand began to pick, pick me up, I still heard that voice speaking to that person, let go. And that person wouldn't let go. And I saw this hand take me past that person and take me further beyond them, and I kept moving up. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me and said this to me. 2024, now pay attention to this. In 2024, those who choose to let go will go further than those people that choose to hold on. And when I heard the voice of the Lord say that, it continued and he said to me, 2024 will be the year of rest and the year of the fulfillment of all of God's promises in your life. Now, I hear this and I write it down in my notes. Then I go see Dr. Rodney on the 28th of December. And I'm hanging out with him, and after the service, we're walking out. He says, do you want to know what the theme for 2024 is? I said, yeah. He's like, if you tell anybody, I'll kill, I'll, I'll kill you. I'm like, I'm not going to tell anybody. So he says to me, all right, the, 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 the theme for 2024 is the year of the fulfillment of God's promises. And I said, no way. I pulled my phone up, and I had the notes written down. And it said, the year of rest and the year of the fulfillment of God's promises. And I began to freak out. What am I here to tell you tonight? God is going to fulfill every single promise that he has made to you this year in the name of Jesus. This year will be the greatest year of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, this year is going to be the year of the fulfillment of all of God's promises in your life. Think about every promise he made to you. Every promise. There will not be one stone that will be left unturned in the name of Jesus. Not one. And here's the key to rest. So there's the Bible, in the Bible there's a scripture. Labor ye now, into, now to enter into his rest. Now labor and rest don't go, go together hand in, hand in hand. Labor and rest don't go together. So what is the greatest labor that you're going to have to do? To rest. Rest in what? Knowing the one that said it will do it. It's, okay, let me put it this way. All right. So I know everybody's freaking out about, you know, the eclipse and whatever and whatever they want to do. And people are like, you, know, you don't look like you were bothered by it at all. I'm not. You know why? Because there's a book. And in that book, the ending is written in it. And in this book, it says, happy ending. The end. So I don't care. I don't care what happens. Even if the whole earth falls apart, I'm just chilling in my house. I don't care what happens. I'm enjoying life. Why? Because I know the author. So a lot of things might come against you this year from every side. But it doesn't matter what the devil tries to do. By the end of this year, Every promise that God has given you will be fulfilled. Amen. Doesn't matter what the devil tries. Let him try his best. There's nothing he can do. All you have to do is just chill out. Stop stressing out. What am I going to do? Nothing. The more you try to do something, the further it gets from you. And if you, I don't know how many of you remember the message that Dr. Rodney preached about striking the rock. A lot of times people try to help God and they actually ruin things for themselves. God doesn't need your help. 
You just have to obey his voice and do exactly what he told you to do. And the results will be on the other side of it. The year of the fulfillment of God's promises. The year of rest. The year of perfect peace. For your years of struggle, God is going to give you total peace. Never again will you struggle another day in your life. No more struggle. Look at the person next to you and say, no struggle. Look at the person on the other side and say, no struggle. You're going to learn to chill out. Tap the shoulder of the person in front of you and say, chill out. Some people are always so stressed out about every single thing. You know how, you know how I can talk about this? Because I did this myself. <laughs> Last year, in a lot of ways, I actually struck the rock. And I kept striking the rock. You know why? In my head, cause look, either way, think about this. When Moses was standing in front of the rock, the rock wasn't like a tiny little rock. It was a massive rock. Even if he struck the rock with a stick, you think the rock would crack in half? Obviously not. So whether he spoke or he struck, it will be the same result. He should have just obeyed the voice of the Lord instead of striking the rock. But that's what I did a lot of times was try to put my own effort to make things happen. It always failed. But I want you to understand something. After I had that dream... There's a total rest that came upon me. And I just learned to chill out. No stress. Do only what the Lord do, told me to do and nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And let me tell you this crazy story. So I was driving from the river at Tampa Bay Church back to my house. And on the way there, I saw a big, beautiful white and blue tent. And I saw the tent and I thought to myself, my God, that's a beautiful tent. Because I tried to get the other tent that I wanted, but unfortunately, you know, the guy just got greedy on me and he just kept, kept upping the number for the tent. And so it went from 100K to 180K to 200 to 250 and it was just ridiculous. So I'm I, you know, forget that. I'm not going to pay that kind of money. I'm just going to allow the Lord to do it. So I forgot about the tent and I moved on from it. And I said, when the Lord makes it happen, it's going to happen. And so on the way while I'm driving, I see this tent, and I'm like, man, that's a beautiful tent. It's probably the most beautiful tent I'd ever seen in my life. It was right on the highway. It's funny how the tent was placed right between the church and my house. <laughs> Think about that. Of all the places it could be at, it was between the church and my house. That's my commute every single day. Beautiful tent. I'm looking, I'm like, wow, that's a beautiful tent. Look at that. Picture's up. You see that tent? Isn't that a beautiful tent? There's nothing like it out there. So I see that tent, and I think to myself, man, that's a beautiful tent. Incredible, huh? All right. So, yeah, look at the insides. I'll just let you, like... Take that in for a second. Isn't that incredible? It doesn't, it doesn't even look like a tent on the inside. All right, so now let's bring it back to me. So I see this tent, and I'm like, wow, it's a beautiful tent. And I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and said, that's your tent. I said, God, there's a circus going on. What do you mean that's my tent? And I kind of started like, you know, argue with the Lord. I was like, Lord, wait, what are you talking? How can that somebody else is doing a circus in there? What do you mean that's my tent? And I called one of my guys and said, hey, why don't you call them and find out if they're willing to sell the tent? And there's no harm in checking. So he sent an email over. In two minutes, the guy replied. The owner of the tent replied. And he says, get me the evangelist's number. I want to talk to him. So he got my number and we spoke on the phone. 
He began to talk to me, and he said to me, well, I heard you want to buy my tent. I said, well, are you open to that? He says, in fact, I am. I was thinking about selling the tent. I said, okay, well, um, can you tell me the price for the tent? He said, don't worry about that. Just come see me. I said, okay. Bring your wife with you. I said, all right. And so we drove over to the tent, and the same day we're hanging out of the tent. He's taking me around the tent and touring the whole place. And I'm like, wow, this place is incredible. And I'm just like in awe of the, how beautiful and big the tent it was. I mean, the pictures don't do it justice. When you walk in there, it is massive. It's like a mega structure. And so he shows you the whole tent, and he says to me, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm going to sell you that tent for $180,000. I said, the whole thing? He said, yeah, the whole thing. I said, okay. And he says to me, since the last people that you used the tent from screwed you over, he used a far worse word than that, because he cusses like a sailor. And uh, he says, since they screwed you over, I'm going to help you. I said, okay. He's like, you don't have to worry about paying me for the tent right now. Give me whatever dollar amount you want and pay it as each event goes. And I'm not even going to charge you interest on that. Okay? And so now in my head I'm thinking, okay, that's fantastic. I'm gonna, but I thought to myself, you know what? I want to pay cash for the whole thing. I don't want to get into debt, myself into debt. I want to pay cash for the whole thing. And so I had a crusade lined up to go to California. And the Lord tells me, cancel that crusade. I'm like, what do you mean cancel that crusade? I can't just cancel a crusade. The Lord said, is it your crusade or is it my crusade? Ah, uh, yours. So the natural doesn't make any sense. Now, if I didn't do that, how am I going to pay for the tent? Hello? Logically, it doesn't make sense. So I'm looking at the whole thing. I'm like, well, how is that going to work out? And the Lord says to me, take two weeks out and just spend time with your staff and do a staff revival. So I took 20 of all, all our people, and when, for two weeks we just did a staff revival. I just preached to my staff for two weeks. And the Lord said, do it because you got to get your staff on the same page as you. Because the commanded blessing is the place of unity. So I preached for two weeks to them. In the natural, you know, my administrator probably thought I was nuts. Thank God she's a Holy Ghost. Oh, she doesn't think I'm nuts. It's fine. She's a Holy Ghost lady. She's just as nuts as I am. It's fine. Works out well for me. And so two weeks I'm preaching to my staff, doing nothing. And then Dr. Rodney is doing his, uh, his solo thon thing. And I'm sitting here, and I'm just giving random numbers. Because I, I, I like everything, all the numbers rounded up. You know what I mean? So it was like, if it was, a, it was like 158,000, I'd give like two grand to just make it 160. So I was doing stupid things like that. So I was just here doing dumb things. <laughs> and so I think I gave like not even that much. I think it was like $2,500 or whatever. And I said, whatever, Lord. I mean, it is what it is. And I'm sitting there. And uh, I said, you know what? It'd be nice to have that tent and the money for the tent. And so I'm, I'm driving. Well, my wife was driving. I don't really drive that much. <laughs> she generally likes being the passenger princess, but sometimes I prefer to be that. Amen. <laughs> I just like having my latte in my hand and, you know, while she drives the car. <laughs> so, on the way there, I'm talking to this friend of mine. And uh, we're on the phone, and we're chatting, and he's like, you know what? Have you bought that tent, that tent yet? And I said, no, not yet. He's like, how much do you have to pay for the tent? I said, well, $180,000. He said, oh, okay, I see. Why don't you come see me on Saturday? I said, for what? He said, oh, just come hang out with me and whatever. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a check. At least it'll help you buy two ice cream cones. <laughs> That's what he said to me. I said, okay, fine. And so... I went up to see him with my wife. We drove all the way to Ocala. And then uh, we're hanging out with him and we're chilling. And he says, hey, I wanted to give you this book, which is a good read. I said, all right. So I took the book. And he's like, I left a nice bookmark in there for you. 
I said, okay. I took the thing, and I went straight to the bookmark. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled the bookmark out, and I, you know, I don't care. Like, if it's a check, I'm going to open the envelope and see what's in there. You know, I don't really care about, like, offending people, you know. <laughs> if you know me, I don't really care. So <laughs> I took the envelope, and I pulled it out, and I looked at the check. It was $180,000. And he looks at me and he says, go buy your tent. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. I didn't do anything for two weeks and 180 grand came in. I should do less things, Lord. But you get what I'm trying to say. I obeyed the voice of the Lord, canceled whatever he told me to cancel. I sat at home for two weeks and did nothing. And $180,000 comes in. But here's the thing. If I hadn't obeyed the voice of the Lord then I would have never been on that call with him and I would have never made it to go pick up that check. Yeah. And we went obviously and deposited it Im Im immediately. <laughs> you don't wait when people give you things like that. You go deposit it right in that moment. And so anyway, the money comes in for the tent and this gets better. You wonder how it's going to get better? I'm going to tell you exactly how it gets better. So for one year, I tried to buy the tent. didn't happen. Two weeks, I rest, and I get the tent. Okay? Now watch this. I finished the Miami Crusade. I come right back to Tampa. And the, the owner of the tent was calling me. He's like, when are you going to give me the deposit for the tent? And I said, well, uh, just come on Monday. You know, we'll meet on Monday. I'll give you a check. Because I knew I had the whole money for the tent, so I'm going to pay him cash. So he came over on Monday. We sat down, and I said, well, I'm going to give you the entire amount for the tent. He looks at me and says, no, no, don't do that. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no, I don't need the money right now. I said, what do you mean I don't, you don't need the money right now? He's like, use the money as capital and just give me whatever you want. And then pay it as you go. I'm like, what? I was like, I was like how much should I give you? He's like, yeah, whatever you want. 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, or whatever. So I gave him like 20 grand. He's like, that's great. And he's like, don't worry about the payments. When, and the lady who was his administrator, like, what dates do you want the payment every month? He, she's asking the owner. He says, don't worry about the, the date for payment. He can pay me whenever he wants to pay me. So he basically just gave him the tent for free. But it's amazing to see when God wants to do something, he will do it as long as you take your hands off of it. And all I did was sit around and I sold seat. I sat here on that chair right there and gave just random dollar amounts into Pastor Rodney's crusade and $180,000 comes in. So I give $2,500 to receive 180K. That's a good deal to me. Look, if God can do to skinny brown Indian, he can do it to anybody. I mean, it's me. I'm like not even the smartest guy on the face of the earth. Like I'm probably the stupidest Indian that you'll ever find. I'm even bad at math. Like, I'm a terrible Indian. But even then, the Lord still helps me. If he can help me, you think he's not going to help you? I said, if you think he can help me, you think he can't help you? I don't know, there's a, there's a crazy pastor who keeps talking about something called heaps. heaps. It's been nothing less than months of heaps. All I've had is heaps and heaps of blessing. And you know what's funny? Which was the day I found the tent? The Sunday after Pastor Rodney began to preach. On Monday. When Pastor Rodney preached on a room prepared for you. Oh. 
Genesis chapter 28, verse 20. Then God made this vow. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he'll provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I've set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I'll present a tenth of everything he gives me. So Jacob made a vow with God that I will give a tenth of everything if he keeps me safe in this journey. See, one thing I've always learned to do is doing business with God. I, oh, when I sow a seed, I always tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sowing this for this purpose and for this reason. A lot of people pray, they fast, they do everything else, but they never sow seed. Zero multiplied by zero is zero. God can multiply zero. Hello? There has to be something in the ground. And when there's something in the ground, then you can pray and ask God to multiply you because there's something to multiply. Many people want God to give them breakthroughs, but they've never sowed anything in the ground. A farmer can't buy a piece of property and say, God, well, give me, give me, a, give me a harvest of mango trees. That doesn't work like that. you got to put mango seeds in the ground to get mango trees. If there's no seed in the ground, there's no tree, there's no fruit. Now listen to this. I'm going to read verse 15. What's more, I'm with you, and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I'll bring you back to this land, and I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. God is going to give you everything he has promised you. You know, I was praying today, and I was asking the Lord, Lord, because for me, I believe in timelines. You've got to set a timeline, and you've got to set a date for your faith. You can't just leave it open-ended. you got to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm believing for you to do this by this time. In 2023, in January, I told the Lord, Lord, by the end of this year, I want to be married. And supernaturally gave me a wife. Amen. Amen. It applies to everything. <laughs> now, listen to this. A Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow. It has to be watered and fertilized in the ground where it's been planted every day. It doesn't break through the ground for five years. Five years, okay? So I was, I was reading about the Chinese bamboo tree and whatever a little while ago, and I didn't get all the facts right. But then today I was praying. I said, Lord, what do I tell the people? What is the timeline that you want me to give them for their breakthroughs? And the Lord said to me, what didn't happen in five years will happen in five weeks. Okay, now listen, now listen, now listen. What didn't happen in five years is going to happen in five weeks. And so I said, well, that's interesting. And I was listening to my message that I was preaching in Miami. And I was talking about the Chinese bamboo tree. So I thought, that's interesting. So let me go and look up some facts. And I began to look it up. So it says, for f it takes five years. It has to be watered and fertilized in the ground where it has been, planted every day. It doesn't break through the ground for five years. After five years, though, once it breaks the ground, it will grow 90 feet tall in five weeks. Five years, it doesn't even break the ground. Then suddenly, at the end of five years, in five weeks, you have a 90-foot tall bamboo plant. So what I want you to understand, be not weary in sowing good seed. The season of reaping your wonderful harvest is at hand. <laughs> Do not be weary in sowing good seed, for the time of harvest is at hand. 
Do not be weary of planting good seed, for the time of your harvest is at hand. I'll say that again. Do not be weary in planting good seed. The time of your harvest is at hand. So everything that you have sown. And let me tell you, the River Church is one of the greatest sowing churches I, ever, I know in the world. So for five years, whatever you planted <laughs> is going to show up in five weeks. You're not just going to multiply. You're going to burst forth with growth in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You're going to burst forth with growth. You are going to multiply and then you are going to occupy. You are going to multiply, then you are going to occupy. You're going to multiply, then you're going to occupy. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. Then suddenly, boom, everything. It's going to be a suddenly. It's going to be a suddenly. That's what's going to happen to you. I didn't just come here to preach an offering message. I come, even if I'm preaching an offering message, I come with the word of the Lord. If there is no word of the Lord, I don't want to preach. But I'm going to continue on this the rest of the week. And I'm going to give you keys. I didn't even give you the keys. I didn't even get to the rest of the part. There's like a whole bunch right here that I haven't even gotten to yet, which I'll get to tomorrow. I'm going to do part two tomorrow. Amen. You like the sound of that? How many of you are ready to sow some good seed in the ground tonight? It matters where you sow. You can't sow in some random ministry that's not winning souls and doing nothing for the kingdom of God. And I've said this before. I believe in this ministry more than I believe in my own ministry. I, that's not even a joke. People think, yeah, that's, that's funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I really like this ministry more than I like my own ministry, all right? So... So when I'm saying so, I'm not saying just put whatever. Let me tell you, tonight I want you to give so radically that I want you to, Pastor Rodney in Africa should be encouraged about what's happening here. Amen. So I'm going to ask him, how many are you going to sow good seed tonight? Yeah. No, you didn't hear me. I said, how many are going to sow good seed tonight? Yeah. People watching me online, tonight is a night to sow good seed. There are going to be suddenlies that are going to take place in your life the next five weeks, everything is going to change. In fact, even before the end of this week, many of, you, many of you will have supernatural financial breakthroughs. Your past and the problems of your past will look like a bunch of potatoes. For the harvest that's coming is great. Amen. So every eye be closed across this place, every head be bowed. May the Lord speak to you what to do tonight. If you have two numbers in your heart, it's always the bigger one. If two numbers bother you, put them together, give it all away. I sold $2,500 <laughs> to be multiplied to $180,000. So tonight, may your seed be multiplied. May the Lord speak to you whatever you need to do. Maybe you're saying, God, that's all I have, and God's saying, that's all I want. Just because you sowed a big seed once upon a time doesn't mean you should stop sowing good seed. Keep sowing seed. Do not stop. The time of your wonderful harvest is at hand. Hallelujah. The ushers will come and pass the envelopes down the roads. Go ahead, ushers. Pastor Ryan. Hallelujah. And let if me just say this. Go out of your way. People watching online, release something significant. If the Lord speaks to you, sow a $1,000 seed, sow it. 2000 sow it. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. Obey the voice of the Lord. And may be multiplied tonight. Some of you have the ability to do 10,000. Others have the ability to do 50. Others 100,000. When the voice of the Lord speaks to you, just obey. As I obeyed the voice of the Lord and I saw multiplication, if you obey, you will see the same multiplication take place in your life. Tonight, sow something significant. And after this, they're going to sing and then hand it over to the great man of God, Pastor Caleb Ring. Hallelujah. And we'll see you tomorrow night.
Make sure you be, you're here every single night. Don't miss this, these, this week. Pastor Caleb and I are going to be tag teaming. It's going to be absolutely epic. Amen. Let's go ahead and do your best tonight. Go ahead, Pastor Ryan. Amen. If you're making out a check, make checks payable to RMI, which is Revival Ministries International. Those of you watching, you can give many different ways you can give. Uh, also those in the building here, but you can go on revival.com. And then there's a drop-down box, and you can click Invest Now and, uh, and give that way right on the website on Revival.com. You can give through text message giving, which is Push Pay, and that's Give RMI, all one word, G-I-V-E-R-M-I. You text that to 77977, and that's your text message giving. On Cash App, it's dollar sign Revival Ministries. Please put your name in the subject line if you're giving through Cash App. Many people give through Cash App and, and PayPal. PayPal is revival.com forward slash PayPal. Those of you watching on YouTube, you can give right through the Super Chat. There's a slider at the bottom of the screen there, and you can slide that over and give right through YouTube. And then we know there are many people that uh, would rather write out a check and send it in. And so if that's you, if you have a checkbook that you're trying to get through and want to fill out a check, you know, some of these online giving ways are limited. You can't give more than, you can't even give a million dollars through the online push pay. So if you need a million plus, then that's going to have to be a check or a wire. And so the check would be to Revival Ministries International. People stopped writing and started looking up at me when I said that. Was he really? But you can mail in your gift. There's going to be a P.O. box that pops up on the screen, and it's P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. I'll give you a moment here to get your gift ready. What do you believe in the Lord for this week? Going to be a powerful week of breakthrough. You know, you can't. That's why the Bible says don't grow weary in doing well, for in due season you'll reap. You can't keep sowing and not see the breakthrough. And, and as the word of the Lord has come, this is a week of breakthrough. You're going to find yourself on the other side of a testimony by the end of this week in Jesus' name. You know, you believe the Lord for, for a tent, you believe the Lord for something, and then you're believing the Lord, you're believing the Lord, and then all of a sudden you're not believing the Lord, you're rejoicing, and you've got the tent, and you're telling the testimony, and that's going to be your story in Jesus' name. You're going to be telling the testimony, amen, and many of you before the week comes to a close, amen. I'll give you a moment here. Hallelujah. Be a part of what God's doing. All over Africa, as you saw tonight, it goes into Africa. It goes into the London crusade that's coming up, uh, the, the Cape, Cape Town crusade. Even though it's paid for, paid for that's the, the good news is that everything was paid in full by the time they put their foot on that plane for Africa. But you're still sowing into the harvest of souls and people being reached. There's people in Africa watching now. There's people who are watching who Pastor Rodney and Adonica and the team are coming to their hometown in the, in the weeks to come that are excited to receive him in person. So you're sowing into really the world and people being touched and changed. All right. Does anyone need another moment to finish making out your check? Whatever the Lord's telling you to do, just do it. Be obedient and be obedient quickly. And release your faith as you give tonight. Okay. Everybody ready? All right, I'll pray and then we'll, uh, we'll pass the buckets here. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. We thank you for every giver in this place, Lord, that this is the year of rest and this is the year of the fulfillment of the promises of God. Lord, we know there's big things that you put in the hearts of your people. Thank you for blessing your people so they can bring in abundantly and fulfilling your promises to your people. That this will be a week and this will be a year of great joy and great rejoicing because of the abundance that you've brought into our life. We thank you for it. Bless every person. We thank you for the team once again. Lord, as they go, that you bless every one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, ushers, you can go ahead and pass the buckets here. And then when the bucket comes past you, Stand to your feet, rejoice in the victory, and stand to your feet, and let's worship the Lord together tonight. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in 
and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around shout of praise tonight. Come on, lift it up. Lift up a sacrifice of praise. Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place. You can just play softly on the keys there for a while. All across this building tonight and everybody watching, take just a moment, close your eyes. What an honor and delight it is to be asked to minister this week with the one and only Ankit Rob Babu. Tag teaming, but there is only one teacher that we want to receive from this week, and He is the Holy Spirit. Across this room, I just invite you, take a moment, stir within you a greater hunger, a greater hunger. Father, this week, let it not be a commonplace week in my life. Let it be a week of intensity, a week of discovery, (laughs) a week of igniting, deep within me. Father, the things in my heart and my life that I've let the world begin to put out, I pray a fresh fire to be rekindled upon it right now. Oh, Holy Spirit, touch your people. All across the airways and in this room, saturate this place. Let the very breath that we breathe be intoxicating and holy. Let people breathe shallow tonight because if we breathe deep, we feel we couldn't even take it all in. Let the very glory of God saturate every single vessel. As you promised in your word in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Well, Father, I am flesh tonight, and not only am I flesh tonight, I am hungry flesh tonight. I want to know you. I want more of you. I I don't care about pompous actions. I don't care about dignity or looking good. I have a hunger in me that is so deep, God. You're the only one. The only one. (laughs) 
My whole life I've never belonged in any clique or any crowd. I couldn't quite be a jock because I wasn't that sporty. I couldn't quite be a thug because my pants didn't hang too low. I couldn't quite be a redneck because I just couldn't handle the Justin Roper boots. But I found where I belonged when I met you. You're everything. You're the sum total of every want, every desire, every dream, every satisfaction, everything rolled in to one single moment with you. I know, God, why men of old used to pray. I would rather have one moment in the glory of God than to own the world for an entire lifetime. And tonight, I just ask that you would saturate me to minister. And Father, I pray that you wouldn't just contain the ministry through my words, but the very atmosphere in the airways would be so charged that people all around would be caught up into the heavenlies. Tonight, be a night of encounter. Tonight, be a night of fire. You are an all-consuming fire. May the fire fall fresh on every single heart tonight. Just stir it up. You got the Holy Ghost. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost already falling. Sometimes you got to plow with the word, but there's other times it's just a group of people that say, God, you're the only one we know that can always do more. Nothing in the world can always produce more but you you are the God of more the El Shaddai the God of more than enough I pray more fire fall on me tonight than I have contained all the years of my serving you I pray tonight you would dip me in the kerosene of your spirit and you would set my heart ablaze I pray tonight that there would become an ignition by the Holy Ghost that transforms the remainder of my days. I pray tonight to meet you in this place. Romananda la 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 sata. Rige, rige, rongonga, singoli le vasata roto. Bele brondo, si calivre, te mingeringondo, si vlande la soto. Ascuroto le mambrandande le lidi sete rodoso. Oh. Oh. Oh, is there, is there a shout I could give you to God tonight that would cause your eyes to fall on me? Is there an offering I could give to stop you to look at me? Because tonight, God, I am locked in on you. You're the only one that satisfies I thank you for that saturating presence in this place tonight. Make every part of this evening holy, for you are holy. May every vessel under the sound of my voice, I pray right now, any resistance from religion or the flesh or the fear of men or demonic lies or oppression, be lifted right now. There would be an openness in this atmosphere all across the airways. Tonight, Lord, (laughs) may we wind up on the floor. (laughs) With an elephant of glory on our chest and a fresh sprinkling of the Holy Ghost and fire. If you are hungry for more of God tonight, I want you to give him a rip-roaring shout of praise. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence in this place.
you can be seated. Welcome everybody tuning. I, I, I don't always do this, but I do want to say tonight, I mean, take a moment and just give a round of applause to the worship team tonight. I felt such a sweet presence of the Lord, especially when they did the old school Holy Spirit. I could just have been wrecked on that tonight. What an honor and privilege for those of you that, that don't know who I am. My name is Caleb Ring. Um, I'm Dr. Rodney's son-in-law, but also my wife and I pastor in Claremont, Florida, in the Orlando, Florida region. And I'm a graduate of the River University. That's right. There was several of us in our graduating class that went on to do decent things. And there was a few of us that Lord knows where they are right now. Amen. But the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. I want to minister tonight. I felt impressed upon the Lord Actually, just recently, I was I, I got these stupid emails all the time from you know Google saying you know you're running out of space. Do you want to you don't want to buy a cloud? Everybody wants you to be a, a monthly partner with them. You know, notice that every ministry wants you to be a monthly partner, but Amazon wants you to monthly partner, Hulu wants you to monthly partner, Disney now G- Google Gmail wants you to be a monthly partner for just twenty bucks. You can get on the cloud, and so. I was going through there, and I clicked on this button that I'd never found, like delete big file emails. And it took me all the way back to 2012, which was the year my wife and I launched into the full-time ministry. And so I'm going through all these old files, photos of me. I mean, it was awesome, you know what I'm saying? Like going down memory, memory lane where... You, know, you remember that meeting, and it was so powerful and so awesome, and you're seeing the photos of the little girls. And I came across this video of, uh, I was preaching in Alaska, and I actually remember the message that the Lord gave me. It was based upon the ten virgins, the five foolish and the five wise. The five wise had enough oil to make it through the midnight hour, and the Lord told me to preach the message, Get it, do you have enough oil? And the oil is basically get it through time with the Lord, but the oil is that ignition for the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn in your heart. And I'm preaching on this, and you know, this is this has maybe happened like briefly in other meetings, but as I was ministering, this woman, this girl, she was only 18, 19 in the back of the room, fell into a trance. And I'm not talking for a few minutes. It was probably about 8 30, 9 p.m. And she was on the back row. This church was packed out in Angoon, Alaska. And she just went into a trance. Her eyes were wide open. She didn't move at all. Everybody around there started the commotion about it as people began to realize she's just, she's there but not there. And I watched her as I was preaching and I could see, I mean, this girl did not move, like just stared straight ahead, didn't even blink for, for hours. Service ends. I mean, I preached till 11 o'clock, and the power of God had fallen in the place. People answered the altar call that night. Service ended, and this girl was still on the back row. Everybody left. She was just absolutely in a trance, not moving. And about 1 o'clock in the morning, she comes out of the trance, and she just comes out drunk on the new wine and is just laughing hysterically. And this guy, his name was Walter Jack. I think he's gone home to be with the Lord. He was an awesome man of God, a, a, a First Nations person from the Clinkett tribe. He tries to help her up. And when he helps her up, I have a video. He's trying to walk her out of this church. And every step, he's getting drunker and drunker and drunker until they don't. I don't even know if they made it all the way out on the video I had, but I remember it distinctly because it winds up being about 2 o'clock in the morning. It's winter time in Angoon, Alaska with snow on the ground. And at 2 a.m., they're rolling around on the snow outside, totally overcome by the glory of God. Well, the long story short is that that girl at 18 years old, I didn't know this, but her mom came to me crying because her daughter had actually been diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. She was given a death sentence. The girl was not going to live. But that night, in the presence of the Lord, God supernaturally healed that young lady. She's still alive and she's still thriving today. And I said all that to say this. I want you to like really get a hold 
of the revelation, especially those watching. It's not about hands being laid on you. It's not about a person calling you out. I didn't call this young lady out. I didn't get a word of knowledge. I didn't even move in healings. She just tapped into the glory of the Lord, and the Lord touched her. Amen? God will touch you fresh tonight. Amen? Amen. Who's hungry for more? I don't know, man. I just know that all I know is I just, I feel like a little kid again, like, like I'm back in Bible school because I'm, I cry a lot now because I'm like, God, <laughs> I'm so hungry. I feel like I've not even began to touch or press in to what I know you have available to me. And I'm just, I don't even care what people think. I just want more of you. Man, I want more fire. I want to be so on fire that my hair turns orange or burns off. So I got to be bald for Jesus. Let, let it on fire, God. Walk around smoking. I just want not smoking like that. It's another, smoking like smoking from fire. Amen. I'm not smoking no peace pipe, amen. He is Jehovah Shalom, but he ain't, we, we, ain't talking, we ain't talking no peace pipe, you know what I'm saying? Is this Jesus wonder? No, bro. It's a serious moment right now, guys. Come on. I'm trying to talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost, and you guys are talking about peace pipes. I mean, my Lord, help me right here. Father, I thank you for just conviction to fall on every heart right now. <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 3. Father, I just thank you. You are an all-consuming fire. May your fire consume everything in this place, not of you. Tonight, Lord. I want to talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost. This young girl, I want you to hear this. I don't care what's going on in your life. We have become a generation, or I, maybe I've just fallen victim to it now that I've been pastoring so long, where it's like you just wind up always in these meetings, counseling, trying to help people, trying to, and pour into people. And it's like you're pouring your life out. People will always, you know, we need, we need more this. We need more that. We need more men's outings. We need more women's outings. We need more, you know, socialization. We need more counsel. We need more one-on-one. -on, one -on -one. You don't actually need any of that. What you need is one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Ghost. You need the fire of God. Your marriage is like about over and you're too stupid to get under the fire of the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, burn out what needs burn out in me. You're too prideful to realize, man, what I really need is I need to get under the spout where the glory comes out and I don't need to get up until God has fully cooked me. Amen. People get so in their heads that it's going to, the key is another message. I'm going to get a word tonight. It's not about a, you don't need a lowercase word. You need a head-on collision with capital word, the capital W, amen. He is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire, amen. Come on, Baptist. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire. Who did it originate with? It's not that, oh, it's that naughty Holy Spirit that came after Jesus. No, Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire. You can't encounter holiness without encountering fire. Amen. Come on. Amen. Moses walked up to a burning bush that was never consumed, fire all around it, and it was a holy place to be. Our God is a holy God. And he'll burn out the junk of this world. And you got junk. Don't sit there and act like you don't have junk. People act like their halo's so bright, everything's wonderful. You have junk. Junk in your trunk. Come on. You got little, little lurkings of jealousy always going around in you. You're like, uh -huh. he, he got 180,000, that's great. Someone bought me a Subway sub. I guess that compares. 
<laughs> I'm just going to hit it tonight. You don't think that needs to be burned out? You don't think if you don't let that thing be burned out now that it doesn't grow to the point that then all of a sudden you find yourself one day cut off from all the blessing of God and attacking the church? How do you think these people come out? You ever notice that you can put, if you put something anointed online, people can't not comment. I've always wondered, what does it take to actually be that person? Because I've read stupid things online. Who's read stupid things online? And I've never felt compelled to like spew my guts out of the person. Like, <laughs> But these people, it's because they, they don't let the fire get in them. There is no fire. There's just anger. There's just wet underwear. There's just crankiness, there's jealousy, there's pride, there's all of those things lurking in them because they won't let the fire do the job. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume you. Man, you feel like you're going through a season right now. Maybe you've been like, man, I don't know, man. I've been following God 20 years, and I don't know if anything's going to change. It's always changing as long as you're in the presence of the Lord. Tonight, the Lord is going to touch you fresh with his fire. Amen. Who wants more fire? Who, who really wants more fire? All right, I'm just making sure I'm in the right room right now. These are the people right here. The rest of you guys couldn't even stand up. You know, I, I want fire. Yeah, over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're going to go to Matthew 3, and then you're going to go to Revelation 3, then you're going to go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I know where this is going. I'm actually a serious person. Actually, I'm not at all. That's a lie. I repent publicly. My biggest challenge as ministry is the fact that I'm always thinking of a joke usually. And anytime anything gets intense, I always try and lighten it up with humor because I'm like, well, it's getting intense, you know. Right before the breakthrough, I'm like, let's dial it back and have fun. Son's about to manifest on row number three right now. Let's <laughs> dial it back, dial it back. Nobody wants to see that thing come out in public again. <laughs> ah, the worst part is this the person you invited to the meeting, you know? Come with me to church tonight. I just feel like you're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's an awkward drive back home. <laughs> the little, little word of advice. When going to revival, let your friends drive themselves. <laughs> just save yourself that drive back in the, in the quietness. Like, so anyways, <laughs> which one am I talking to right now? Never seen that side of you before. No, it's a true story. I was in a church service when I first got saved. It was in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, we had this African preacher come in, uh, Robert Kayanja, actually, that, was, uh, that I just met in Uganda. He came to our church. I don't even know how our church got him to come. I, honestly, we were like 40 people. Like, we, my pastor must have been the best salesman ever. Like, oh, come, it is great. We have big church. I don't know how you, yeah, how you get this guy to, we were out on the streets of Nashville. I remember it distinctly, what, handing out flyers to people in Antioch, like, come, man of God's coming, you know? And I didn't even, so anyways, he comes to the church service, right? And he's getting up and he's preaching and he gives this altar call and people are coming forward. And I'll never forget this. I mean, I was just saved, okay? So it's not like, give me some grace here. I wasn't like yet in the Pentecostal world, so I didn't know how to deal with these things. And he stands in front of this lady and I'll never, like, this is really, the temperature of the room got cold. I mean, I suddenly could see my breath. And I, I had never seen in the church this happen, but I'd seen exorcists. That's my only understanding of demonic activity. So I was like, what is he about to do? Get the holy water? You know what I'm saying? Like, the power of Christ compels thee. And I was honestly scared. I'm just telling you, truthfully. 
And so I, I was like in the back of the room and I was like, but the crazy thing was, is it was the lady who had four kids and a husband that was sitting beside me that went forward. And now she's up there like, and the room gets cold. And I promise you, it looks like she's levitating and her head's going weird. And she starts going, ah, ah, ah. And Robert Kahn just like all like, come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Like he didn't even yell. But the part that surprised me the most was the fact that I looked over to her husband and he was like, it's every Thursday, bro. <laughs> like it didn't, you know, like everybody's like, ah, ah, ah. he's like, bro, you should see her at home. <laughs> so if you. <laughs> When they say you should bring a spouse to a revival meeting, you should bring a, a future spouse to a revival. Because if you just you go ahead and dodge a bullet on that one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> should see her at home. I pray the Lord sets you free tonight of every, everything that's not really you. Amen. Matthew chapter 3, do you find it yet? It says, in those days, John the Baptist appeared preaching in the wilderness of Judea along the western side of the Dead Sea, saying, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the one who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah Isaiah, when he said, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the road for the Lord, make his highways straight, level or direct. Now this same John had clothing made of camel's hair and a wide wet leather band around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. I want to stop right now because I think that in every generation, there are people that press in for the fire of heaven. You have, uh, if you've ever read the book, 2,000 Years of Charismatic Church History, you understand that Azusa Street was not the birth of the Holy Spirit in the world today, as some people refer to, but the Holy Spirit has been present ever since the day of Pentecost. And in every generation, there are people that press in for it. Come on. And there are people that say, Lord, I, I, I don't want status quo. I don't want good meetings. I don't want applause of men. I don't want tingly feelings, and I don't want to. I want the fire that gets on the inside of me and transforms me. I want you to hit me so hard I feel like I'm gonna die. Are you with me right now? Like that's the hunger that I'm in. I'm just like God, take me as close to death as you can take me. Till I'm one breath away, and I'm like, ah, and then be like, okay, and then do it every week. I want to start Monday, like, ah, I, had, I was praying, I'm on my way back to Alaska, whoo, shurama, ha, labroto. And I, I remember praying for this guy in Alaska, I'm going, he's pastoring now. I've never met a hungry dude like this. When I laid hands on him because I was the vessel that the Lord was pouring through into this guy, he was so hungry. I grabbed him, and I don't know if anybody's in here, anybody know how electricity works. I was an air conditioner refrigeration guy. You always touch high voltage stuff with the back of your hand because if you grab it with your hand and it's and the voltage will just seize your muscles, and you can't let go, and people die like that. I grabbed this guy, and it was like high-voltage electricity. I couldn't let go, and I'm screaming, and he's screaming, and I was like, ah! and I mean, that was the closest to death. If we hadn't fallen over and hit a pole and awkwardly separated and just, and I'm the preacher, you know, and I'm over there, and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. But I just want you to understand something about God. He's not a mental, I'm going to figure him out. When you think you figured out God, I pray he comes up behind you and just, <laughs> to where you're like, I have figured nothing out. 
All this to say this, John the Baptist was the voice of the one preparing the way of the Lord, and it goes into detail to actually explain. If you, you got to ex- understand this. John the Baptist is the son of a priest, a Pharisee. His dad was dressed in robes. He was official. Everybody respected his father. And here's John showing up at the meeting in camel's hair, a leather belt like, like, you know, like a total hippie with locusts. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's bugs, right? So... Imagine the guy that's bringing the word of the Lord, and he's got like a leg of a cricket sticking out of his mouth. Hey, get ready, because there's one coming soon. I mean, it's like wild, you know what I'm saying? God likes to shock you sometimes. God will use the vessel you don't want him to use because he's going to offend all of your flesh. Some of you are going to wind up wind, meeting smacked head on up the fire, God, all in your life from some of the least, most at least expected sources. A little kid will walk up to you with boogers on their fingers, <laughs> lay hands on you, and the fire will hit you, and you're like, I don't understand, God. Why is a boogery kid got more fire than I do? Because he's got the heart of a child. Amen. No, because God loves you so much. That's why. People say, why does God use who he does? Stop thinking of it, why does he use them, and start realizing he's using them to get to me. That God loves me so much, he cares for me so much, that he will always raise up the craziest, most ridiculous people in every generation to give me an opportunity to jump in on this thing or run from this thing. And I made up my mind a long time ago. You can call me a Jesus freak. You can make fun of me. You can call me a lunatic. But I am going to be on the side with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to be on the dead side. I'm not going to be on the, 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 the cool, everybody's so hip and wonderful. I mean, I want to be on the side where people look like they might not even belong in church. You know what I'm talking about? They are not polished. People with the fire of the Holy Ghost aren't polished. They got weird stuff going all over them, man. But there's a passion on the inside of them. And it takes two seconds in their presence. And when they start describing Jesus, they're not like, Jesus, he's the son of God. And he's great. And he's so wonderful. And he carries lambs. They're like, Jesus. His eyes are like fire. His raiment is like lightning. His voice resounds on the inside of me. His touch transforms my life. I know only that I want more of his presence. I want fire. I don't want, I don't want tingling. I want fire. John was a crazy person. He was wild. Because God wants to offend the heart to get, or the flesh, to get to your heart. Man, I pray many people will go through life and they never, ever truly open up to an encounter with God. You can be on the fringe. You can watch it. If you keep reading, it says they were baptized. And he goes on to say, verse 11, As for me, I baptize you with water because of your repentance, that is, because you are willing to change your inner self, your old way of thinking. You regret your sin and you live a changed life. But he who is coming after me is mightier and more powerful and more noble than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to remove, even as his slave. He will baptize you who truly repent with the Holy Spirit and you will remain un- and you who remain unrepentant with fire or judgment. His winnowing fork is in his hands and he will thoroughly clear out his threshing floor and he will gather his wheat into his barn and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I want to talk to you a moment about the fire of the Holy Ghost. Years and years ago, I was preaching in Houston, Texas, and I was at, oh no, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and I was ministering with my family. It was, it was, I had just started in the ministry. It was actually my third week in the ministry, and I was at Pastor Bob Nichols' church, and I remember he got up to announce me. He said, Pastor Caleb Ring is here to minister. How long have you been in the ministry, brother? And I was like, three weeks. And I'd probably held up too, because every time I try and hold up fingers in public for numbers, I'm always holding up the wrong fingers. Amen. 
So I was like, three weeks. And he was like, oh, great. You know, like you could tell already is like, why did I let this kid preach here? But the Lord gave me a message that night about the fire of God. And it is this, that people that avoid the fire, you have to understand, fire is coming in your life. You will meet the fire of God one day. The question is, do you willingly embrace the fire today to say, Lord, burn out the junk of the world now? Or you stubbornly refuse and keep your heart away from God and wait till another fire comes? There is a fire. Our God is an all-consuming fire. He will consume everything that is impure and unholy. He will take it and consume it entirely. Because he's so pure, so wonderful, so perfect, that's what he does. So when we talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost, people are like, what is the fire of the Holy Ghost even for? What does it do? It gets on the inside of you. It's a purifying fire. Malachi 3 says, who can stand the day of his coming? For he is like a refiner's fire, a purifier of silver. He comes to purify the junk in your life, purify the things, the consuming things. And it's not just, man, that I'm lusting. It's not just that I'm prideful. It's the distractions. It's the fear of man. It's life that begins to just well up around you. It's all the things that just consume your time and your affection until Jesus becomes less and less important and more and more your focus on the things of this world. The Bible actually says that the seed is perfect. But the question is, what ground does it fall into? And that's where you're like, Lord, let me be a vessel of fire. Let me never be a person that starts taking it for granted. And oftentimes I think, man, there was a couple years back, when, in 2021, when we, we did our grand reopening of our, of our church. That Sunday, it was like heaven invaded the room. Uh, it's one of those moments that mark you. Like, it was so intense, I couldn't speak in English. And I can usually speak in English. It's, it's actually my first language, if you didn't know. I'm quite good at it, I think. Except in college, that was rough, but I think that's all arbitrary. What does a college English professor know anyways? But I couldn't speak in English. I got up. And the presence and the glory of God was so strong. I mean, my lips were quivering. My knees were weak. I collapsed on the stage. I was just, I mean, just overwhelmed by the glory of God. And it was so intense. I mean, people are falling on their faces. It was like heaven invaded. And, you know, all I could think is, man, Lord, you could be anywhere on earth manifesting like this because you are everywhere but when he manifests somewhere understand this not everywhere he's not manifesting like that in walmart in Kissimmee. i've been there bro no offense pastor antonio busiest walmart in florida they say bro I, i've never felt any manifestation in there i've smelled all sorts of crazy stuff in there and seen some crazy sights so you, when you start talking about the manifest presence of the lord where he decides he looks and he sees a place and he says, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Those are the hearts. Those are the people. Look at that. And he just comes in such an undeniably tangible way that you are literally overwhelmed by the glory of God. I mean, the Bible talks about where the priest couldn't even stand to minister. I think that means they couldn't even stand. Because I've been there, where the glory of God is so strong, you can't even stand. Your flesh starts failing you. You're collapsing. It just, it's, it's just overwhelming you. And I'm in this place, and I've got this, and I'm just overwhelmed. So I, I, I like signal for my wife. She gets up there. She can't even talk in English. And it goes on for a while. And then after service, you know, we pull ourselves together. We have a great service. And we get a, a review on Google, and it was like, I don't want to misquote it, but it was stupid. It was like, don't really know what's happening here. <laughs> Not even sure what they were saying. <laughs> Worship went way too long, <laughs> one star. And it was a person that had been to my church a long time. It wasn't a visitor. 
And that rocked my world. I thought, God, what am I even doing? But I began to realize, you see, people think that if I just get in the room, something's going to happen. No. It's not about a room. It's about a heart. It's about your heart. I can be hungry all day long. I could sit here, fall out, and just cry for six hours. That's where I'm at. So it's a miracle I'm standing. But the question is, where is your heart for the things of God? Are you at that place where you're like, Jesus, you got to touch me? I mean, I've had those moments. I don't even know what's even being preached. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, there's a hunger so loud on the inside of you that you can't shut it off. And the key to the fire of the Holy Ghost is being that vessel that's so hungry where you invite God. Lord, I'm not asking. I'm saying, Lord, please consume all that I am. Everything, good, bad, and ugly. Come on. And some of us have more good than ugly, but others have more ugly than good. And some of you are just straight bad. And you need that fire of the Holy Ghost. You need it. I remember reading Acts, you know, 1 Kings chapter 18, when here's Elijah, he's calling down fire. The God who answers with fire is going to turn a nation around in a single day. And he preps this altar, and he preps it with water because it's in the middle of a drought. So he's given the greatest sacrifice that he can give to God so that God doesn't just pass on by to the next place, but he grabs the attention of the God who answers with fire because he says, the best that I can give you, I'm going to give you, and I'm going to give it to you in front of everybody to see that I'm not ashamed to give my best to you, God. And you know, I remember timing this. You can go to this, 1 Kings chapter 18. He's the 500, whatever, 350 prophets of Baal. King Ahab's there. All of Israel's there. It's the showdown at the OK Corral. you got to pray fire down from heaven. Being honest, I would start in Genesis and read all the way through Revelation, and I'd be like, somewhere in the midst of this, fire's going to fall. I would give myself the greatest buffer I could give myself. Elijah prayed, count it, 13 seconds it took him to pray that. And a nation is hanging in the balance, one man standing against 350 opposition, but this was a man that knew his God. This was a man that knew my God is one that answers with fire. He got up and he prayed 12 seconds, and the entire region was shaken by the fire of the Holy Ghost because a sacrifice was made. And because someone that wasn't playing games stepped up and said, something's going to change right now. I double dog dare you, triple dog, take away every stamp. I double dog dare you to challenge the Lord right now. Lord, if you've got more fire, I want more fire on the inside of me. I want, if you're watching right now online, this same atmosphere that is in this place, God will show up in a room with one person that's hungry enough to get out of the comfort zone and press past the veil and say, God, touch me with you. Your fire! I don't want a little touch. I don't want an okay touch. I want a touch. I mean, I remember hearing Dr. Rodney, I got touched when I cried out for the fire and I couldn't speak in English for three days. I'm like, God, I don't want to speak in English for a week. I don't want to speak in English for a year. I want the fire that consumes and transforms my life from the inside to the out. The only thing I know is that I want more of you. I know I'm not the greatest communicator. I know I'm not the greatest preacher, and that's okay. But I know this. I want your fire in every aspect of my life. I don't just want it. I think I need it. Other people, maybe they can get by without it. But I feel like if I don't have your fire, I don't know if I'm going to make it till the end of the week. I want the fire to burn in my veins so strong. 
That your word is the first thing that slips through my lips every attack that comes. I don't have time to complain because a fireball from within lets loose a word from God that I stand upon and I catapult myself past. I want a fire so big on the inside. I want a raging inferno. I don't want to have to go to a prayer meeting with 700,000 people to get a touch. I want to be a person that in my bedroom all by myself can tap into the realms of God and call upon the God who answers with fire. And in 12 seconds, all the atmosphere is transformed and a fire busts out of my gut and all consuming fire that begins to burn out that quit mentality that comes on all of us. I'm going to quit. I'm going to back down. I'm not good enough. I'm not great enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not anointed enough. I'm not beautiful enough. Forget all of what you are. Whatever you lack, he replaces with his entirety. He is the all-consuming fire. Rather stop saying I'm not enough and start saying I've got too much of me and not enough of you. Let all that's left of me get consumed by the fire and let more of you come. People can sit in a room like this and get nothing You can walk out the same way you came, or you can decide right now, I didn't come to hear a good message. I came to encounter a God whose eyes, if I dare to look at them, will mark me for eternity and change me from the inside out. I came to meet a God that if he even places one finger on my head, I will run with that touch for a hundred years if he lets me. I came to meet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His voice is like the sound of many waters. God can say in one second on the inside of your spirit what man can preach in a week long of meetings. God can do something in this place right now that will change the rest of your life, the rest of your kid's life, the rest of your grandkid's life. If he tarries, God can touch you so great tonight. It will be a generational push that breaks a thousand years of curses and sets you on a new path. It will be a touch that transforms every aspect of this generation. It will be a touch. That is undeniable that you don't have to explain. Elijah didn't have to say he's answering. Everybody knew he's answering. Everybody could see he's answering. I want that type of touch. I want that type of touch. I need that type of touch. God, America needs fire. America needs fresh fire. I want a fire that burns in me brighter than I have ever seen another man burn before. I want the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's falling, it's falling. It's falling, it's falling. Purifying fire. Purify. 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 You won't have those thoughts anymore. You won't have them. There's a purifying fire, a sanctifying presence of the Almighty, a touch that people will mock you for, but you won't care as long as you stay in the fire because they weren't here this night. They didn't feel what you felt, and they don't know what you know. Oh, you met God tonight. You met him face to face. You met the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His touch transformed you. It put a word in your spirit. It put a calling in your ear. It put a destiny in your sight. It put a wind at your back. Oh, it's life itself. It's like a river that gushes forth that's cooling and and inflaming at the same time. God is the only one that's like a cool breeze and and a fire at the same time. 
He's the only one that feels like an elephant on your chest and wings on your back. He's the only one that defies every logical reason and every scientific fact. He is the alpha, the omega, the bright, and the morning star. Fire's falling. Fire's falling. Fire's falling. Don't be like the ones that let it pass you by. Don't be like the one that's so hyper-focused on the camel hair and the locust or the blonde beach hair and the five o'clock scruff that you can't hear the true message that's in the room. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock, says the Lord. Will you open the door and let me in? Pray the fire of the Holy Ghost fall in every living room. Fall in every bar, fall in every place that this is broadcast. I pray that if this is replayed even a thousand days from now, the same tangible touch of God would be on every second of the broadcast. I pray the saturating, overwhelming, undeniable, inexcusable move of God to erupt. I pray, God, tonight... I want more. I want more. I want more. Hurra <laughs> babata, belle broto. Ieri dei che roscia radan le brando cura. Fire! Let heaven mark you. Let heaven mark you tonight. Lord, brand my, brand my heart with your heavenly branding iron. Put the fire of God on the inside of me. Seal it on my heart. Be like a seal upon my arm. Mark me for eternity. I don't want anybody to question where my allegiance lies. I want a fire so bright that it's like a trumpet announcing he is one that believes in the Lord thy God. He is one that believes in the name of Jesus. He is one that believes in the Holy Ghost. He is one that carries the fire. He is one whose words turn the world upside down. He is one that will change his generation. He is one that will turn his family around. He is one that carries the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Transforming power.
See, Matthew 13 talks about the tares sown among the wheat. It says, the two will grow together until the day of his coming. And then on that day, he will separate the tares from the wheat, and he will burn the tares with fire unquenchable, but the wheat will be the children of God. He goes on to explain the parable, saying that the tares are those of the devil sown in amongst the harvest. And that's what I began to realize, that in every church and in every move, there are tares sown among the wheats. The fire of God is not only on this earth, Something that consumes the chaff on the inside of you, because you do have chaff, Luke 3.16. Chaff is part of the wheat. That's part of you. That's the things in you that he wants to burn out of you. Come on. If you hold on to it, if you cover it, if you hide it, people hide things. No, God, not that. Boy, I tell you what. What are you even trying to save? Let the fire burn through my life. Years ago, I walked through a a forest in Florida that had just had a fresh fire burn through it months before, and there was fresh green going up all around the black, and you could see when the fire comes and consumes, new life comes after that. There is chaff in your life. He will consume that chaff. But the tares among the wheat are children of the devil sown in amongst the harvest, the children of God. And these two will remain until the end of days, the Lord said. So the fire is a protection to burn out the things in you that you need burned out, but also it has a way of making the tares run away. The more you burn. See, people will come around you. People think the fire, once you get lit with the fire, that's it. No, why do you think Paul wrote to Timothy, you need to rekindle this fire? Because there's a lot of people that will want you to put that fire out. When the Lord touched me years ago in Nashville, Tennessee, he said something to me that was both life-changing revelation and just straight instruction. He said, Caleb, you need to move from where you're living, or in two months' time, you'll be right back where I just delivered you from, because people don't want you to change, he said. (laughs) Worldly people, religious people, those people may even be your family. They don't want you to be on fire because when you're on fire, you convict them. They don't want you to be talking about the things of God. They'd rather you talk about bush light, March madness. They'd rather you talk about the things of this world, Barbie, Oppenheimer. But you don't talk like that when there's a fire in you. And the fire protects you from what's on the outside, and it protects you from what wants to grow on the inside. So why would I not want the fire every day? I'm going to ask for every head bowed and every eye closed. I can get whoever on the keys. I want to give a call today, especially for those watching online. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... If you have never met the one I've spoken of tonight, whose eyes are like fire, whose clothing is like lightning, whose touch feels like the greatest undeniable explosive touch you have ever felt. If you have never met Jesus, then there is an invitation tonight, and I want you to know that his arms are stretched wide, and he is saying, come to me, everybody tired. Evangelist Ankit even said it, so many people let themselves get weary and worn out and they just try and push through and suck it up, buttercup. Stop trying to do it on your own. Come back to your first love, the one that said, if you are tired and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today, all you got to do is surrender back into the loving arms of Jesus and say, Father, I'm coming back to my first love or coming to you for the first time. Maybe you've been around church. Maybe you've heard of messages, but you've never really met Jesus today. Tonight, I'm asking you to surrender your life to him and see that it is the greatest, wisest, and the best decision you could ever possibly make. 
Choosing Jesus today is wiser than a person that bought Bitcoin in 2000. It's that valuable. Don't hesitate and don't hold back. Don't think, what will people say? Don't think I've done it before. If there's a question within you, am I at the right place that I need to be with God? If you even have a question, you should be running up to this altar tonight and saying, God, I am not leaving the room the same way I came. The questions stay at the altar, for at the altar the fire will fall. And I will be a sacrifice consumed by the Holy One of God. And my life will be different and marked from this day forward. Secondly, maybe you are serving the Lord, but you have been beat up. Maybe you are on fire for God and your husband cheated on you. Your wife left you. Your business partner. Who is a Christian that came to church, screwed you out of money? And it rocked your world. You couldn't believe that wickedness lied in someone that sat in the church. You couldn't believe you met a tear amongst the wheat. But I'm here to tell you, even though that tear tried to hurt you and pull you away, if you'd come back to the fire, oh, you be in the wheat that you are. He would burn out the hurt. He would burn out the offense. He would burn out the scars. And he would leave you better than he found you. And it happens tonight to those that surrender. So cross this room and everybody watching online, and if you want to take a moment and call the number on the screen, we have prayer operators standing by that will minister to you over the phone, and the fire of God will touch you afresh. You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Tonight in this place, you say, I'm coming back to my first love, or I want to come to meet Jesus. I want to surrender afresh tonight. I want to give him my life tonight. Then with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to raise your hand across the place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's the presence of the Lord. As your hands are lifted up, you already feel. It's like you raise your hands into an inferno. You could feel the heat. But it's a good, comforting heat. It's the heat of his presence. It's the fire of God. I'm going to ask you that raise your hands. Those of you that can, get up from where you're sitting and come up here to the front. Every step you take, you come closer and closer to the fire of the Holy Ghost. There it is. I had a man in Alaska that couldn't even make it to the altar because the presence of God was so strong just in the walk up there. He was overcome. The Lord will meet you here tonight. The rest of the room, do not detach. Do not distract. This is not the time to go to the bathroom. This is a holy moment. Or if you could put your eyes on Jesus, I promise you, there's a word from God that he could declare over you, a capital word that will come. There's a fresh touch of fire, and we're not through tonight. Everybody standing up here, I want you to know you didn't come here tonight because I preached a good message. You're here tonight because you had a heart that said yes to the perfect seed of the Word of God. And you said, I want to be a ground that produces the right fruit. So, Lord, I don't care what it looks like, and I don't care if I've done it a thousand times. I'm going to keep coming until I know that I am good ground and that your seed will produce what you want it to produce. You came forward to the one that matters the most. And your hands are already lifted up because you already know you're just surrendering. That's what you're doing. I'm done. I tried it my own way. I suck at it. I don't even want to see what I would produce on my own. Are you kidding me, God? I want to see what you can produce in me. I want to see what you can produce through me. I want to hear what you want to speak through me. I want to hear it with my ears coming out of my mouth. I want to hear the word of God come from me. I want to be a vessel that is used. I want to be a, a sanctuary where you live. I want to be a seed that you plant in. I want to be a temple that you live in. I want your presence. That's hunger. 
And he said, blessed are those that hunger. He said, because those are the ones that I'm going to feel. <laughs> so we're going to pray real quick together. Everybody tuning in right now, join in on this prayer. Say this with me loud and proud. Say, Father, tonight I unashamedly lay down my life at your feet. I repent for religion. I repent for complacency. I repent for, for compromise. Jesus, I give you my life. Take it. Make it the life you've called it to be. I believe you are the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire. And Jesus, tonight I'm asking for a touch of the fire of heaven in me. Burn in me, God. Consume all of me and put in more of you. From this day forward, I will follow you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my protector. You are my guide. You are my comforter. You are my advocate. You are my life goal. You are my great prize. You are my strength. And I give you all that I am right now. In Jesus' name. Now just let the Lord touch you right now. All across the room, lift your hands. Fire of heaven's in this place. Jesus, touch her. There's people out there, I've been watching you. Some of you have been marked from the start. Satata. Roshata. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Strengthening in this flesh. Strengthening in this flesh. A strengthening. Jesus. Ooh. Jesus. Can y'all do that song, Anointing, Follow Me? Y'all can do it? flow with the Holy Ghost with that. Fire's falling. Jesus. Woo. Rome. Jesus. Say Rodos. Jesus. Say Rodos. Fire from your head to your toes. Never the same again. Jesus. Now. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Roman got a bashat. Rebe bede bekete. Rebe bede kete. Oh, Roman dashat. Slebre kete bebete. This woman right here. Just help her out in the aisle. As she comes out in the aisle, I don't think she's going much further than that. Touch this dear brother for his sensitivity. Jesus, thank you for the fire of God. There it is. Yep. Knew that one was going over. Wobbly woman, row five. Let's press in. Let it fall, let it fall. Every hungry vessel.
<laughs> Touch my brother. being healed tonight these are awesome by the end of the call all pain had left by the end of the call cataracts and blurriness in both eyes have disappeared she can see without blurriness anymore by the end of the call depression was broken off of their life come on tonight is a night of breakthrough all side effects of medication, heaviness, and uneasiness left immediately after they prayed. Pick up the phone right now. It's the Holy Ghost. You talk about him, he shows up. Huh. Everybody watching, 
in that last few minutes to call people calling for debt cancellation many many miracles have happened tonight to the Lord be all the glory just like the young lady in Alaska it wasn't even a call for healing but he is a healer where he is people are healed people baptized with the Holy Ghost and got their prayer language for the first time all the way in Jamaica New York Patrick's praying in the Holy Ghost for the first time come on somebody well let's <laughs> let's just close tonight in worship as they keep rolling for everybody watching online don't miss tomorrow night this whole week uh, evangelist Ankit and I will be tag teaming we'll figure it out as we go who does what but it's going to be a great and fun and explosive week can you believe it's Monday night it is Monday night right Feels like night 1,396. Maybe it is. Say this with me. Say the Lord is good. And all the time, he's good. Just take a moment. Thank the Lord for tonight. If the Lord touched you tonight, testify about it to someone before you get home. Call someone you, you know should have been here tonight. Tell a man, I got rocked by the Holy Ghost. And I tell you, tomorrow night you need to come. Maybe they're one of those people that will growl right 20 minutes in. But they can get this at free too. Call three, four friends and bring them tonight. Let's finish this week slam-packed. As Dr. Rodney goes across Africa, we're going to have revival here. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap and a shout of praise. I love you. Until tomorrow night, God bless you, and may the Lord be with you everywhere you go. is coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Jesus is alive, that he 